Hi, uh, I'm Mario. I'm the author of the book Beginning Android Games and I'm going to show you how you can import the projects accompanying the book into a new Eclipse workspace. So the first thing you have to do is go to the Beginning Android Games Google Code uh, page. Uh, you can find a link to it in the description box of this video below. Um, once there, you will realize that we have to set up the development environment. I described this in the book, in the first chapter. Yes, the first chapter. <laughs> uh, basically, what you have to do is install the JDK or Java SDK by Oracle. This is a simple matter of downloading an XM file for your platform and just follow the install process. Next, you have to download Eclipse, which is going to be the development environment we are going to use. Uh, to create and work with our Android projects, just download the Eclipse CDE for Java developers for your specific platform again. Um, what you get from Eclipse is basically just a zip file, so just uncompress this uh, to a folder of your liking and make sure you have a link to the executable so you can start it easily. I, for example, have it here in my Windows taskbar on Linux. You can uh, do the same on macOS as well. Uh, the next two things we have to install are the Android SDK, which is again just a zip file for the specific uh, platform. In case of Windows, there's even an installer now. Nice. So just grab whatever you need and install it. Uh, and remember the folder you installed it to because we need that information later on. And finally, there's the Android Development Tools plugin for Eclipse. Um, there's instructions on how to install this in Eclipse uh, <coughs> at the links to the Android developer site. I'd suggest just following the instructions there. It's pretty much straightforward and we don't have to waste any more time on the initial setup. Okay, so assuming you have all this set up, the next thing you need to do is install a Subversion client. Subversion is a source code uh, revision management tool um, which allows you to work on a project uh, in a distributed man manner with a couple of other guys and also keep track of the history of your code. So Subversion is in general a good idea to use in your project if you want uh, to store the different um, the different iterations of your code and have sort of a backup if you screw up. Um, I'm not going to explain what Subversion is uh, any farther. Uh, if you're interested, just look it up on the web. There's also alternatives like uh, JIT or Mercurial. Just choose your poison. I decided to use Subversion for the code of this book. Uh, for this, you have to download a Subversion client. There's one called Tortoise SVN for Windows. Just go to the site and download the respective uh, executable installer, install it. For Linux and Mac OS X, there's command line utilities as well as user interface uh, based, or rather graphical user interface based utilities. Um, you will find them on the web after a short Google search. So once you've installed your Subversion client, the next thing you have to do is check out the code from the Subversion repository. Uh, this repository has an URL, which is http beginning minus android minus games dot google code dot com SVN trunk. So let's copy this. And when you've installed Tortoise as when on, on Windows, you'll get a couple of new entries in your context menu. So what we need to do is uh, use the SVN checkout context menu entry. Here we have to specify the URL of the repository and we have to specify the target folder or rather the checkout directory where that code will be downloaded to. In this case, I'll just download it to, to the desktop for convenience. Okay, so this will take a while. While the code is checking out, we can do something else. I already fired up Eclipse. Um, I'm in some workspace which doesn't have anything to do with the game, uh, with the book. Uh, what we need to do is switch the workspace. So we go to File, Switch Workspace, whoops, see Daisy, and then select Other. And what we choose as our new workspace directory is basically the directory we check out the code to. So in my case, that is uh, the beginning Android games folder in the desktop folder. 
So I just select this, click OK, click OK again. Eclipse will now restart, which takes a while because we are on my slow netbook. Just give it some time. OK, the SVN checkout has finished in the meantime, so we just click OK. And now we have to wait for Eclipse. Go, go, go. Okay, so this is what you'll see the first time you run Eclipse on a new workspace. The Welcome tab, just close it. The next thing we have to do is tell Eclipse where the Android SDK is installed. So go to Window, Preferences, Android, and for the SDK location just browse to the folder which contains your Android SDK installation. So on my disk that's here. Press OK. Press OK again and you'll see that the SDK and EDIT stuff is going to get loaded. So, for the final step, we have to just import our projects, which works by going to File, Import, General, Existing Projects into Workspace. Then select the folder which contains the projects, which is the same folder as our Eclipse Workspace, the folder beginning Android games on the desktop in this case. Click OK. And Eclipse will tell you which projects are going to get uh, imported which are all the projects uh, for each of the chapters of the book. Uh, the last thing we have to do is just press finish and Eclipse will do its magic and import the Eclipse projects into this workspace. Okay, so the next thing that's happening is that Eclipse is trying to build those projects. This will fail on first try, usually. And it takes a while because the Building process of Android projects is not the fastest. So don't panic, those errors are fixable and they are easily fixable. All we have to do is give Eclipse a little bit more time. It's still building the workspace. Go, go, go. Okay, so. Right, so eventually the ADT plugin gives up and just says, hey, I can't build this project. So what we have to do is go to Project, Clean, make sure Clean All Project is checked, and press OK. This will trigger a rebuild of all the projects which are missing the Gen and, yeah, just Gen folders. Uh, the Gen folders contain uh, automatically generated classes which each Android project uh, needs to be able to run. Um, the ADT should now try to... yeah, so now they, the folder has been generated and the R file, which is just some file holding some integers, uh, referencing some resources and assets, will be regenerated. And eventually, after like two days, the ADT plugin and the underlying build process will finish building our Android projects and generating those missing files, which will make us happy because all the red, red markers will be gone. Okay, so now we are basically finished. You can now start to explore the source code of each project. For every chapter containing code, there's one project. The first four letters encode the the chapter's uh, um, name. Uh, the only exception is chapter 5 and chapter 6, which are combined into the CH06 uh, Mr. Num project. Um, that's pretty straightforward. So to start uh, the, <coughs> the project on an Android device or in an emulator, just right-click the project, select Run As, Android Application, and I've attached a uh, Nexus 1 to my netbook. So here it is. And we can see that it's doing something in the Lockcat output. And on the device, the code of the chapter 2 sample is running. 
yeah so that's basically it i hope you'll enjoy the book and the quote um please let me know of any issues on the site on the issue tracker uh, and you can also join the discussion group um, if there's any ideas or questions you want to share with others okay ciao